Industry's evolution to horizontal wells has transformed drilling landscape and technologies such as oil tubing. Joining me today is Lance Portman, the Vice President of Oil Tubing at Baker Hughes. Lance, thanks so much for joining me. I'm very happy to be here. So Lance, tell us, what is the current status of oil tubing? Okay, so um, I've been in this industry for well over 20 years. And the first thing I'll say to you is, in terms of applications, it really hasn't changed very much. We're doing the same sort of things with the same sort of equipment. And this is not true for other industries. I pick drilling, for example. Drilling has moved for, from vertical drilling to MWD, logging well drilling, horizontal, um, geosteering, a lot of massive changements that's not happened yet in cool tubing. That's what we need to push forward. That's what I'm working on with, um, with Baker Hughes to really bring that sort of uh, functionality to the coil tubing industry. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing within coil tubing? So I, I think you'll get a different answer to that question depending on where you are when you ask it. If though I pick a, a generalization, I would say the biggest uncertainty is, sorry, the, the biggest problem is uncertainty. Um, we actually, as an industry, run into well after well after well blind. We don't even know where we are in the well with a great sense of accuracy. So this leads to unnecessary risk and inefficient operations. We don't know if we're doing the right thing in the right place. That has to change. So what we're doing as an industry, and specifically at Baker Hughes, is developing downhole telemetry systems, um, downhole visualization software algorithms to really give the core tubing operators that information as to exactly what's going on at the bottom of the core tubing in the well. Well, beyond the uncertainty, what are the challenges offshore? Okay, so um, you're you're right to be specific. There's, there's really distinct markets in coal tubing. There's offshore and there's onshore. For, for offshore, uh, one of the biggest challenges is getting onto small platforms. Um, the infrastructure is aging, um, uh, particularly the wells that we're looking to work over with coal tubing, i.e. they have problems. So one of the uh, solutions that we're working on at, at Baker Hughes is very small packages that are very lightweight, don't take up a lot of deck space, but we can place on these small old platforms and fix the wells. If you were to ask me for onshore, um, of which North America land is by far the biggest market, the biggest challenge is extended reach, getting the cold tubing along these very long, unconventional um, wells. So again there, um, we're working on methods, products, lubricants, tools, to enable cold tubing to reach these very long horizontal sections. Okay, and as you mentioned, oil tubing hasn't changed so much structurally in the past 20 years, but where do you see it going in the next 20 years? I am really looking forward to the next 20 years, and I hope I don't say the same thing in 20 years as I'm saying to you today. I think there'll be big changes, actually, in the next 20 years, and really building from what I was saying to you earlier about this downhole visualization. Uh, today, an operator kind of looks at a, at a gauge in front of him that tells him the weight. That's mostly all. In the future, he's going to have almost like a synthetic vision, a computer-generated reality of what's going on in the well, in the formation, real time, as it's running the core tubing. So this will permit much greater effectiveness in, in the use of the, of the core tubing. So that, coupled with the evolving computer simulation models, I think is really going to make its mark in the industry in the next 20 years. All right. Well, Lance, thank you so much for giving us this insight into coil tubing and where we should see it in the next 20 years. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us on drillingcontractor.org.